Can I can I do a thing for the special anniversary show? Sure. What what thing are you going to do? I have a very special hippo tonight, for, and I'm all glittery and stuff. <laughs> so this is the very first hippo I ever got. This is Humberdink. Yes, he's named after the prince and the princess bride. Humberdink used to look like this. See, eyeballs and clean, cleanliness and such. You have two versions of the same. Th- I have four, actually. But when, when I first got Humperdinck, Humperdinck came everywhere I went. And I mean everywhere I went. So um, Humperdinck's kind of matted and has no eyeballs. And he had like, <laughs> Chinese food and grape soda spilled on him. And he smells kind of funny and he doesn't really sit straight. He's got like zombie eyes going on there. He does. He has like little orphan Annie dead eyes. And I think if I washed him, he would just fall apart because I think that like the dirt is all that's holding him together. But this is my very first hippo. And I thought since it's your special anniversary show, I would introduce everybody to the very first of the madness. This is the hippo that started it all. I, I and it doesn't make any sound whatsoever, so you should love him. It's creepy, though. With the dead zombie. Oh my He's God. fucking creepy. It's like 28 <laughs> days <laughs> later, hippo. You're you're doing the mock you're doing the macarena with it. So. <laughs> Happy anniversary! There it was, just for you. Can we do the the news now? Let's let's do the news now. Okay. All right. Oh, how old is Humperdinck? Humperdinck is sixteen years old. Fucking hippo can get a driver's license. All right. Yeah. Each week. Catherine goes out on the world wide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff for us, brings it back here in a little segment we like to, we that we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? How do I fuck that up? I've been saying that exact same speech. I don't know. It's like your bread and butter. I know. Every day for like, every Monday for like years upon years. Oh. All right. When I was 10. No, honey. Thank you, though. I got Humperdinck when I was 19. I'm an old lady. Aww. Did you see? I sent you a link. They actually set, found that, like, cursing stresses the brain. I saw that. Isn't that awful? You're screwed. <laughs> You're gonna have a stroke in, like, 10 minutes. We do. Hi, we're starting with Naked. Because it's 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 naked. It's what we do. It's what we do. Yeah, this is from Newport, Oregon. Police, woman naked from waist down jailed. It sounds very innocuous for our fair, but no, no, it gets better. A woman naked from the waist down found running across the field with two dogs on a leash refused to get dressed and tried to kick at the windows of a patrol car as police took her to jail. Investigation started shortly before 1 a.m. Sunday. Police received multiple reports of a woman screaming in a field. Police arrived on the scene. They encountered a woman running, who, a woman who was naked from the waist down, running across the field with two dogs well, on a leash. Sometimes dogs gotta go, and you just don't have time to put pants on. A woman identi- identified as Carissa Marie Lapral, tw- uh, 19, told police she was homeless and traveling through the area. Police suspected LaPraul was intoxicated. No! But she was Just not... look at her eyes! She was fucking intoxicated. She was not injured or being menaced by anyone. LaPraul refused to dress herself, even after her pants were found in the field. Uh, LaPraul continued to yell obscenities at officers and continued to refuse to dress herself, so police arrested her. After being in handcuffs... She resisted officers' efforts to walk her to a patrol car. While on her way to jail, LaPraul intentionally hit her head against the interior of the car and kicked at the windows of the patrol car. Okay, because I was going to say, I thought she was kicking at the windows from the outside, and I was going to say, like, try to imagine being that cop (laughs) in the patrol car and seeing the flying kick coming from the unpantsed woman. That's a view, but if it's from the inside, then it's a little different. I, I just it it it's the constant question of this show: what came first, the naked or the crazy? 
Does one become crazy, then naked, or does one become naked, then crazy? I'm pretty sure the crazy comes first. But do you know? Do you know for sure? Because this that, was just... That I can't answer, but if you're out walking your dogs with no, like, you know, with no pants on, the crazy is already present. Well, apparently she had the pants. She just decided during the curse course of walking the dogs that the pants were too much trouble. Maybe she had to pee, too. Oh. Sometimes you just gotta go. And unlike men, women can't just whip it out. And then, and not only that, she, she burst into naked fury. Yeah. No pun intended. On the officer's... Garbage! I will not put on my pants! I will not wear pants! No bumper you show, this is how I dance. When I'm not wearing any pants. I just... That was her. This this is not one to tell the grandkids about this little incident. <laughs> Nineteen years old. That's that. She is getting a hit start on the crazy. I'll tell you. Huh. Okay. What else? Ah, oh, this is Father of the Year. This ah oh, from New Orleans. Intoxicated Mississippi man. <laughs> Arrested for allowing eight-year-old son to drive. Father was arrested this morning in Livingston Parish after state troopers discovered his eight-year-old son was driving the family from Mississippi to Dallas while he slept intoxicated. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Well, you know, we've all, we've all had the family vacations where your mom is so mad at you for fighting with your siblings and she says, I'll turn this car around. <laughs> and then, you know, she just gets fed up and she gets out and says, well, you drive. And then you do sometimes. Father Billy Joel Madsen, 28, 28, was arrested and, bro and booked with, into the uh, Livingston Parish Jail. Uh... Yeah, children are great for a number of things. Being your designated driver. Not one of them. No, that's not. No. Police received a call from a uh, concerned motorist traveling west. Uh, the driver said a green Chevrolet pickup was moving erratically and a child appeared to be the driver. Have you ever seen planes, trains, and automobiles? Yes. You're going the wrong <laughs> Man. You're going to kill somebody i would hate to be the guy on the road you're driving along you look over and and you gotta wonder for a second there am i the crazy one have i just gone insane or <sighs> mad was the passenger i, don't think I would wonder that I would probably actually just assume it was a little person driving the car. Uh, his eight with gay. His eight-year-old son drive with his four-year-old daughter sat in the back seat. No one was injured. Both children were turned over to protective services, awaiting the ar arrival of a family member. Man. Ugh. Yeah. No. I. Daddy, I can't reach the pedals. It's okay. That's true. How did a, how did an eight year old reach the pedals? How was he even driving? Like, there's no way he could reach the pedals and see above the dashboard unless the, they've got like a smart car, in which case there was nobody in the back seat. This is this is just douchetacular. This guy. Yeah. And look, I gotta put him on the big screen because because know what wrong. Oh yeah, screen. this guy's a looker. Look at that. He's this arrested. Handsome. Arrested Sans shirt. Maybe he gave it to the naked lady. <laughs> she needed pants, though. <sighs> uh, he still doesn't know where he is. Like, he's like, why have we stopped? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. We're, we're just... Bonita Springs is Florida. It's Florida, fucking Florida. Florida. Man oh arrested after trying to light deputy on fire. That's not acceptable behavior. 
A Bonita Springs man was arrested after trying to light a Lee County Sheriff's deputy on fire. Early Sunday morning, the deputy responded to a home on our court in Bonita Springs for a call related to a suspicious person trying to light things on fire. When the deputy arrived, he spoke with Juan Castaneda, who told deputies he had been drinking and wanted to smoke outside. He became belligerent when asked to go back inside the house. Uh, uh, Castaneda tried to stand, but fell and said he was too drunk and wanted to stay outside. Uh, Castaneda told the deputy he hated cops, which is just the perfect thing to say to the police. It's almost as good as being like, hey, you smell bacon? And verbally abused the deputy. Then Castaneda tried to light the lighter in his hand and tried to put the flame on the deputy's uniform. When the deputy stepped back, Castaneda threw the lighter at the deputy. So many things wrong here. So, so very many things wrong. Number one, it's, it's not like they're repelled by fire. Police are not vampires. <laughs> they're not Frankenstein. It's not like, er, fire, man. It doesn't work. Or like the, the aliens from Pitch Black. I know, it doesn't work. But their uniforms are polyester, so that is fucking dangerous. Like, and, and I'm still hung up on the... Up like a cinder. The first, all right, I'm not a big fan of the police in general, but the first thing you, you say when dealing with the police is not... I fucking hate cops because then you're getting off on the wrong foot right there. That's that's not where you want to start the interaction here. My only really issues with cops have been, you know, motor vehicle related. I get pulled over once in a great while, you know, and I always find it being a girl. It helps if you look terrified and contrite. And yeah. I've actually gotten out of tickets that way. I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. No, like, all right, just go. And I'm like, really? That works? You don't start off with fucking no. cops. You gotta kiss a little ass where the fuzz is concerned. But try, what? what if you're, you're drunk enough to be lighting shit on fire in your lawn and you <sighs> literally cannot stand up to go inside, you know. Yeah, well, at what point in the, in the whole process did he think, you know? I lit all this stuff on fire and it went away. Maybe if I light the cop on fire, he'll go away too. Again, I don't think, I think you're attributing too much cognitive reasoning to a person who was literally too drunk to get up and go inside his house. He couldn't fucking walk, but he could work a goddamn lighter, couldn't he? Well, yeah. Next, this headline makes me all kinds of happy. This, this is... Me all kinds of sad, isn't it? And uh, again, this is, uh, I believe this is Florida. This is probably the happiest thing to ever happen. Monkey jockeys ride into Lake County Fair. Oh my god, look at that picture. It's monkeys riding dogs. Yeah, let, let's, that's gotta go on the big one. That, that's monkeys riding dogs. Horns blew, music blasted, and the crowd cheered as the banana derby racing with America's favorite monkey jockeys was underway at the I didn't know there were enough for America to have favorites. Featuring monkeys riding dogs. This is one of the new attractions at the 83rd annual Lake County Fair. Started Tuesday at Fairgrounds in Grays Lake. It runs through Sunday. The monkeys are dressed in brightly colored jockey outfits, riding dogs around a track in a competition format. Gilligan, Bobo, and Bert were the three capuchin monkeys that competed for the title. You gotta read the quote. Philip Hendricks, who calls himself the Top Banana, has been traveling Scared. across the United States four years with his wife and daughter putting on the shows. 
I like to watch the monkeys on the dogs. I enjoy seeing it. Bad My... touch. That's okay. <sighs> My show isn't educational, but it's definitely informative. I'm doing it because I believe in entertaining people with the monkeys. What does it inform people of, precisely? I don't know, but... It... I mean, if it's informative, presumably, he's saying that it informs you of something. I'm Yeah, I'm not sure what, though. Yeah. However, that is a glorious picture, and you can't, you can't be sad. You know, that whatever happens in your life at that moment, you can't be sad because, hey, monkeys <laughs> riding dogs. That's awesome. On the other <laughs> hand, I feel so sorry for the reporter who was yeah. put on this story. What did you do, man? That, yeah, that's that's a man who pissed off his editor pretty bad. Did you Maybe this guy that wrote the Jack's Link story from last week, and this was his reprisal. Did you did you fuck the editor's daughter? Seriously, what did you do? Fuck the editor's dog, and then gave it to the monkey guy. I know. I like to watch the monkeys riding on the dog. There's something very wrong with that. I'm sorry. Just the whole tone of that quote makes me a little uneasy. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. It is kind of glorious, though, because no matter that you can't That's be your, sad. Your desktop wallpaper, isn't it? That picture. You can't be sad. Look at him, monkeys. You just can't. You can't. <laughs> it's not possible. I, I just hope they're fed very well. Oh, uh, here, here, here's another wonderful headline this week. I grandma fights off naked intruder. Making sandwich. God, again? <laughs> this one's kind of beautiful. Um, New Hampshire, a 70-year-old grandmother fought off a home invader with a baseball bat. Please say a man broke into her home. What? Bludgeoning tools for the win. Please say a man broke into her home in Manchester Sunday morning, took off his clothes, and started making a sandwich. With her Seriously, this is like the fourth story we've done where somebody straight up breaks into a home, gets naked, and, and makes and food. Decides they need a fucking snack. With her family asleep upstairs, the, bre uh, the grandmother bravely confronted him and asked him to leave. But he refused. I'm sorry. All right, let, let's start here. You're naked. The guy's naked in someone else's house. Making food, the owner asks you to leave. You like, say no. no. I got a sandwich going on here. What? What the fuck? What? But, but she, when he refused, she let her bat do the talking, Good woman. beating him until he grabbed his clothes and ran out the door. I think whatever plan he had in motion at that point kind of died when the elderly woman begins to break your bones with a baseball bat. A baseball bat will really get in the way of a lot of plans, yeah. And what? Why? Why? Why did he have to be naked? I'm why, do they, why do any of them have to be naked? Why? In someone else's house. How is this a good plan? I don't know, but this is it, it's not even the second time we've done a story like this. Third or fourth. Like every easily. two weeks we get one of these things. And it's getting kind of old. Get naked and make snacks in your own house. Nobody nobody's gonna bother you there. If somebody has better food than you, go to the fucking grocery store. You only have yourself to blame if you don't have any good cold cuts. I just it you know. And seeing Grandma with the baseball... This is what happens, Larry! This is what happens when you get naked in another person's house! This is what happens! You know? This is what happens when you feel a stranger in the Alps, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she could help the Mets, because they could use some help. <laughs> a little angry. They tied up the game in the ninth inning with two outs, and then they blew it in the tenth. A little bitter. Maybe they should sign this lady. We could use some hitting. 
from the Department of Hindsight is 2020. Man attempts surgery on his hernia with butter knife. Yeah, a few people sent it to me, and I was just like, no. A 63-year-old Glendale man was in stable condition after he attempted surgery on himself with a 6-inch butter knife to remove a protruding hernia from his stomach. When police arrived at the man's home, they saw the man lying naked outside on a lounge chair with what appeared to be the handle of a knife protruding from his stomach. As police waited for paramedics to arrive, Lorenz said the man pulled out the knife and shoved a cigarette he was smoking inside the open wound. Oh. The man, whose name was not released, was immediately placed in a psychiatric hold and taken to a hospital. That's not sanitary. The man's wife had reportedly notified police that her husband had become upset about the hernia and wanted to take it out. I love this quote from the surgeon. It is absolutely impossible for someone to fix their own hernia, said Sam uh, Carvajal, a surgeon at Glendale Adventist Medical Center. Just in case you were wondering. And you know what? If you're, if you're dumb enough to attempt it, at least use a knife that's fucking sharp. This man has become... Oh, I have a knife, cousin. It's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. This man has become the living avatar of Don't Try This at Home. At least use a sharp knife. Uh, how do you even? How do you even get a butter knife through your gut? How much fucking velocity and pressure do you have to apply? Uh, okay, all right. All right. I you know, know I know medical care is expensive, especially if you're uninsured. I speak from experience. But 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 it's going to cost you a lot less in the long run if you call an ambulance. Then if you take a knife to yourself, because trust me, you're just making their job that much harder. And then, you know, the cigarettes. And this, what the fuck was he doing? I'm trying to cauterize the wound, maybe? I don't... Well, this is bleeding a lot. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's sterile. On the lounge chair outside. Oh my god, so many things wrong with that. You know, they actually on Lost had to do an appendectomy on the beach. <laughs> and they, they, they showed you kind of how to sterilize everything so you could do an appendectomy on the beach. They didn't use a butter knife, though. No! Or cigarettes. Or cigarettes. I mean, and she, the person who did it was a trained surgeon. That man's stomach... It was also is, fictional television. That man's stomach has just become a Petri dish. The CDC is calling up and saying, hey, can we have him, please? He's going to be neat. He's going to be a fun toy. Oh, more, more. It's going to be like, do you, do, did you ever see that episode of the X-Files where they had the special extra nicotine cigarettes? But the people who were smoking them, the, the nicotine beetles were laying eggs in their lungs. Yes, and they were saying yes. if the beetles eat their way out, he's going to be that guy. Yeah. He's going to explode with like super strong nicotine beetles. Oh. This one, I... Man dressed in drag shot love rival at dice game. Grab your brooms, ladies and gentlemen. It's shenanigans. A gunman dressed in drag... Oh, and he is a pretty girl. He is. Shot a love rival during a game of dice on the far south side early Sunday, uh, Saturday, when threatened to shoot any... And then threatened to shoot any witnesses who told on him. Supermarket grocery bagger Lee Paul Williams. I love how they had to put that in. in the... That man's 35. That man's only one year older than me. Yeah. He has been living fucking hard. He allegedly donned a black wig, pink halter top, and blue pajama bottoms. I don't even want to picture that. Before Did shooting. He shave? Pro apparently not. That's a mugshot. You ain't fooling anybody. Before shooting 23-year-old Brian Stalling outside his home, but Stalling survived his shot to the chest and later identified Williams as the shooter, 
to other witnesses identified Williams. Apparently, his threat did not work so good. Williams and Stalling had been arguing about a girl when Williams falling stall followed Stalling across the road to a dice game and shot him. He threatened to shoot witnesses and barricaded himself inside his home, where he was later arrested. The wig, halter top, and a cartridge matching a magazine recovered from Stalling's vandalized car were taken as evidence from Williams' home. Stalling's being treated Sunday. Where did the drag come in? I don't know. Was it like a dis if it was a disguise so he wouldn't be recognized, you'd think a brother would shave. I you know, I just does he go to the dice game in the the what? It's that kind of dice game. I don't judge. Also, yeah, I think what it's gonna do with your dice and your own personal time. It's uh, not my business. As far as two people <laughs> As far as planning a crime goes, I, I think he's going to be pretty easy to pick out of a lineup. Call me crazy, but I think... Uh, uh, no, he's out of his brilliant disguise. Yeah, even still, you, are you going to forget that guy, wig or no? Probably not, no. Probably not, no. I, lo I just love how, the, how the, the, the article, Supermarket Grocery Bagger. Oh, that's uncalled for. Like, if I commit a horrible crime, are they going to be like, retail cosmetics employee? It's not necessary. It has nothing to do with anything. And finally tonight, oh, Tara. Tara, Tara, Tara. It happened again. And in Florida. Oh, God, no! <laughs> I guess at least it's not a knife. Lee County inmate caught with drug stash in her vagina. A 37-year-old woman under arrest and being escorted through the Lee County Jail was caught attempted to smuggle crack cocaine into the facility on Saturday. Angela Lynn Palmer was being escorted by three deputies when she dropped a clear glass tube and then stated to deputies she had additional items in her vag vagina. An orange cigar tube then fell from Palmer's vagina to the floor next to her feet. An additional clear tube was also found. So she was just shedding these things as she walked along? Inside the orange tube, deputies found two pieces of white rock, later identified as crack cocaine. Both clear tubes contain residue that they were used as crack pipes to smoke the crack cocaine. Uh, wait, wait, wait. The tubes? Were pipes. And she had them in... I mean, not that, you know, not that that's a horrifying thing. People give and get oral all the time, and that's wonderful. But you're going into jail. Like, you're not going to have a lot of opportunity no, to wash no. these things, probably. No, no. Properly. No. And if you're stashing shit up there anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take the leap of logic that <laughs> you probably don't have the world's best hygiene. Someone in the channel said, this crack tastes funny. <laughs> <laughs> there are things that belong inside a vagina. There are. There are things that are specifically designed to go there. Many things. Many, crack many isn't things. One of those things. Crack, crack is not. isn't one of those things. No. No, no. No, it's... Many of those things can be found on the internet. Many of those things can be found on someone else using crack with you. Oh, and let, let's just get her picture up on... Because she looks like she's, she's been road hard and put away wet, doesn't she? Into a pack of Marlboros. Yeah, yeah, she she's does. She's like Lydia from Beetlejuice, like 30 years later. After yeah. She's turning tricks. Yeah. The fact that they were just falling. I know. Oh, they're all, that's. Oh. There's an old episode of Will and Grace where a uh, mini driver is stealing expensive jewelry from, from Karen. And she has a bunch of it stashed. And, you know, she opens her legs and a diamond necklace falls out. And that's funny because it's not real. Honey, what have you been doing to yourself at that point? Man. Dad, that's just. Do some kegels, honey. That's that's all I gotta say. Yeah. Just because 
Damn. Yeah. That and also underwear. That's all I'm going to say. Just... I know, right? Because at least then there, I, I'm like, at least there's something to catch it then. I know. What was the plan? Well, I mean, fly without a net when you're carrying contraband in there. <laughs> if you're going to go in with stuff crammed up there anyway, plan for this shit. What if it was a dildo made from compressed crack cocaine powder, someone asks. Then you have bigger problems. Yeah. If that's what you're using your crack for, that's a really fucking expensive dildo. And you should probably uh. see somebody about that, because... Jesus Christ, I just... And it's jerk off with a tube at that point. Uh. It's got a glass tube! <sighs> People just don't... People just don't know what to do with their nooks and crannies, and it annoys me. It's not a pocket! It's it's not a pocket! It's not a pocket. It's 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 not a it's not a storage receptacle of any kind. No! Jesus Christ! <sighs> Eleven years of this. <laughs> well actually I've only been doing this for one year. But you've already driven me to drink. Happy anniversary. Well, 